Alright, so I've had 58 takes of this intro where I actually tried to sing the song that's being referenced here, but it didn't work. I'm not a good singer, so I'm just gonna say the words, time keeps on slipping, tripping, changing the future with paradoxes. There, I did it! Now you could argue that the Adam Project was really just an excuse to have Ryan Reynolds banter with his 12-year-old self, but it's also a time-traveling sci-fi adventure. Now there is one thing that we can all agree on no matter what time travel show or movie it is. Star Trek, Terminator, Time Cop, Time After Time. Quantum Leap. Time travel probably doesn't work that way. Just in principle, if you don't move through time and space, you could find yourself in 1988, but floating in space where Earth will be in 2022. You'll let me know when the critique is over. But then, why go to 1988? You'd have to wait a whole year for Tim Burton's Batman. <laughs> Magnets! How do they work, am I right? <laughs> Turns out that uh, when you align electrons in the same direction, it creates a magnetic- You know what? It's not important. What is important is a small, non-time travel problem with the Atom Project. In our big finale, where two atoms square off with two Saurians, it seems all is lost when the Elder Saurian fires a special armor-piercing round at the atoms, only to have it change direction and hit young Saurian instead. The problem? If the magnetic force was strong enough to pull and redirect that bullet, the gun itself would have been pulled into the collider long before she was ever able to fire it. If it's a single ninja, they are an unstoppable master of mayhem. It's what TV tropes called the conservation of ninjutsu. I'm gonna talk, I didn't hear any talk. It had definitely been told. So, rogue time traveler Adam has to face a never ending supply of time soldiers who, when shot, look more like they were snapped out by Thanos rather than hit with a weapon. Yeah. Adult Adam explains that if you die out of your time, it's messy, but what does that mean? Turns out it's, uh, it's less of a plot thing and more of a way to mow through a group of soldiers in front of a 12-year-old boy and not have it scar him for life, as well as keeping the rating for larger audiences. Why is that awkward? But there is an issue with time travel stories in general that's a product of them having to be linear narratives for those of us traveling through time at normal speed. When Sorian meets Sorian, she tells her younger self that she did the thing she asked because she currently lived in that future. Now, stopping at a midpoint complicates time travel. Laura isn't stalling for him because he either succeeded or didn't in 2018, which happened four years ago. So now, time makes three loops in 2018 to 2022. Ugh, it's only entry two and my brain's already starting to hurt. During the conversation with herself, past Sorian tells future Sorian that she said that she'd never come back. Past Sorian also notes the environmental impact of the things that she invests in. This is related to the problem of Biff, but he has a bit of an out. The first few years of sure bets that future Sorian has past Sorian make would likely have little effect on the immediate future, but the changes that future Sorian are looking for won't happen overnight, but they'll also change the nature of the sure bets. The information in here is worth millions, and I'm giving it to you. But there's an even bigger elephant in the room. Why did she need to? She already owned the company that invented time travel. It had to already be successful to go back and make her even more successful. So what was the future that she needed to change? Did her altering the future create the relationship between Adam and Laura and therefore create and then destroy itself in a single stroke? Oh geez, speaking of strokes. Now all of this raises the question of Kirk's reading glasses. In Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, to peek into the Star Trek franchise, Bones gives Kirk a pair of glasses from an antique shop in San Francisco, which Kirk subsequently sells to the antique shop in 1984 to be bought by Bones in the 23rd century so that Kirk could take them back in time to sell them at the antique store in 1984 to be bought by Bones in the… oh, you get the idea. There are logical ways out of Kirk's specs specifically. It's remarkable that an antique shop from 1984 lasted to the 23rd century at all, much less hold on to the same pair of specs. Is that a lot? But let's, for a moment, take what's suggested for granted. Kirk sold his glasses in 1984 to be bought in the 23rd century in order to be brought back to 1984. When did the specs get made? The Atom Project creates a causal loop where time travel is created, then that person uses time travel to improve and capitalize on time travel earlier 
turning her already substantial research firm into Skynet with people. When the second reality overwrites the first, these advances no longer have an author, just like a ship that returned from 2018 but never went there. The Atom Project doesn't dwell on their rules for time travel. The only three people doing it at the time aren't eager to stop for a moment and explore concepts like causality. Instead, it invites the viewer to not worry about it. Perhaps the most famous time travel movie also invited you to not worry about it and enjoy the ride. Famously now, we know that Eric Stoltz was originally cast as Marty McFly before it was clear that he was miscast. Part of that miscasting lay in the fact that Stoltz saw the inherent sadness in the script. After traveling to the past and altering the timeline, Marty came back to a world of people and history that he never experienced. He is now a stranger wearing the skin of a family member. But worse than that, what becomes of the Marty that did experience those 16 years? Marty arrives back to the future in his DeLorean to a timeline that has an entirely different Marty going back in time with his DeLorean, perhaps on his own misadventure. Terminators are scary, unstoppable masters of single-minded destruction. They are also the tools of an AI that didn't think things through. By all accounts, the machines were winning the war of the future, and John Connor and his ragged band of survivors were a frustrating holdout to their total dominion. But the machines had one more extra advantage aside from being made of weapons. They were effectively immortal. Connor wasn't making headway. He was just refusing to go down. In their effort to skip ahead, their own Terminator program to kill Sarah Connor and prevent there ever being a John Connor, they go about and create John Connor. And John Connor is so aware of it that he actively sends his own dad back to conceive him. All when they could have just waited out the last of humanity because what is the difference between a week and a decade to a program? You know, for all the things that Avengers Endgame did right, perhaps the biggest mistake the MCU made was explaining how time travel affects causality. On one side, the writers Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely say that retired Steve coexisted with Earth-199-999 and didn't make his presence known until after he made his way back to the past. He is the unnamed husband of Peggy Carter, and there are little caplets running around in the MCU. And on the other side is the Russos, who insist that once you create a change, it creates a new reality. And now there's a reality where Steve Rogers lived out the rest of his life with Peggy Carter, with whatever effects that would have on the timeline with two unfrozen Steve Rogerses. If that's the case, then he might also have headed off a Thanos showdown, eliminating the need for Rogers to time travel, and so now Old Man Rogers lives in a parallel world with two Steve Rogerses, and it's the... It's, not, it's the one not from that world who got to spend his life with Peggy Carter, which is kind of sad when you think about it. No. No, I don't think I will. Every once in a while, there's a time travel movie whose main purpose is to explore a model for time travel and those implications. Those are your time travel movies like Primer that grounded in more theory than technically a wormhole could allow you to travel through time. They generally have their own issues, like the Ethan Supply vehicle butterfly effect. Oh, and uh, Ashton Kutcher's in it. Buried the lead there a bit. <laughs> in that movie, Kutcher plays a boy with a traumatic childhood that suffered from blackouts. It turns out that those blackouts were when his consciousness from the future traveled to the past to alter events to be at least a little less traumatic. Because they really didn't hold back on how traumatic it really was. And the problem is, he knew about the blackouts in his earlier terrible life that set the baseline, so they weren't really times he traveled to the past, but placeholders if he'd like to. Oh, Days of Future Past managed to be the movie that broke Fox's mutant verse with time travel, leaving in its wake confusion of what still happened or what was the continuity in general. And that's before someone gave Deadpool a time travel disc. Now we're introduced to the problem and the solution early on, as the X-Men of the future are on the run from the Sentinels who can detect mutants and then destroy them. 
Any time they get found, Kitty sends Bishop's consciousness into the past to warn the team who then move who then no longer need to send Bishop to the past. Theoretically, they know how they got warned and someone should actually do that, but that is never actually done by the arrival of Sentinels, but by the arrival of the warning of Sentinels. Jeez, you need a whole floor of TVA agents to sort all that out. Okay, before we go, let's take one more look at Back to the Future. Specifically, there really was no need for the sequel stories to happen. Not because they were bad, but because Marty already had the most valuable thing when it comes to the future. Knowledge of it. Doc Brown's plan after finding out that he was going to get shot wasn't to drive another time machine to the rescue, but to wear a bulletproof vest. If Marty knows all the way into 1984 that his son will be a dweeb and Doc presumably has the ability to observe the process, Marty has all the time in the world to fix the problem without Biff ever getting the almanac. Now, did anyone notice that The Atom Project was a way better version of Time Chasers? A story where a well-meaning inventor creates time travel, finds out his corporate sponsor abused it, so he has to use time travel to eliminate the existence of time travel. The Atom Project had way cooler planes, though. <laughs>